Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily De- Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. We are in Genesis chapter 46. And as we go through Genesis chapter 46, it just brings to the finality of this narrative of the famine that has struck the world at this time and Jacob and his sons being able to fight through that famine but needing help. So they go to Egypt, they find Joseph, Joseph reveals himself. Now they go back to Canaan to be able to speak to their father Jacob saying that Joseph is alive but our provision is in Egypt. But I want you to take that big step with me and the big step is this later prophecy and what God had unfolding in his narrative was that out of Egypt he was going to call his son. Out of Egypt he was going to call Israel. And so they need to be in Egypt to be able to be called out of Egypt. So here's this famine, here's this mending of relationships, and now as we get to see in Genesis chapter 46, the promises of God, the prophecy of God coming true later on because of the action of God in Jacob and his family and his possessions. No longer they're going to leave the land that was of their ancestors and go to Egypt for provision and the uniting together of family with Joseph. And so chapter 46 has a lot of detailed information. I'm going to kind of sift through that uh, for you really quickly, Um, but being, being able to also walk in just unfolding that now Israel, Jacob and his sons and his possessions, Israel is going to be moving to Egypt because later on out of Egypt, part of God's plan, got a part of God's narrative, out of Egypt, God will call his son, his Israel, out of there, rescue them in that way. Chapter 46, Genesis. So Israel set out with all that was, that was his, meaning Jacob, and when he reached Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night and said, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, he replied. I am God, the God of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down to Egypt with you, and I will surely bring you back again. And Joseph's own hand will close your eyes. Then Jacob left Beersheba, and Israel's sons took their father Jacob and their children and their wives in the carts that Pharaoh had sent to transport him. They also took with them their livestock and possessions they had acquired in Canaan. And Jacob and all his offspring went to Egypt. He took with him to Egypt his sons and grandsons and his daughters and granddaughters, all his offspring. And these are the names of the sons of Israel, Jacob and his descendants, who went to Egypt. Now, I'm not going to read every single name, but I'm going to speak about his sons, right? Reuben the firstborn, then we go to verse 10, sons of Simeon, sons of Levi, sons of Judah, sons of Issachar, and sons of Zebulun. First six born... And as we go down to verse 15, I know it's really quickly, but these were the sons of Leah, born to Jacob in Padanaram, besides his daughter Dinah. These sons and daughters of his were 33 in all. And it goes on, says the sons of Gad and the sons of Asher. Verse 18 said, these were the children born to Jacob by Zilpah, whom Laban had given to his daughter Leah, 16 in all, up to 49 as we do our math. And then the sons of Jacob's wife, Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin, the sons of Benjamin. These were the sons of Rachel who were to be born to Jacob. Verse 22 says, 14 in all. Quick math, 63. The son of Dan, the sons of Naphtali. Verse 25 says, these were the sons born to Jacob by Bilhah, whom Laban had given to, <coughs> excuse me, to his daughter, Rachel. Seven in all. As you do the quick math through those times, at the end of verse 25, we have 70 in all. And so it gives us this paraphrase paraphrase in verse 26. All those who went to Egypt with Jacob, those who were in his direct descendants, not counting his son's wives, numbered 66 persons. With the two sons who had been born to Joseph in Egypt, the members of Jacob's family, which went to Egypt, were 70 in all. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they arrived in the region of Goshen, 
Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for a long time. Can you imagine that scene? You were dead, but now you are alive. I was dead. I was out of your thought. I was out of your blessing. And now I'm holding you, weeping with you. Verse 30 says, Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household, who were living in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The men are shepherds. They tend livestock. And they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, What is your occupation? You should answer, Your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. Then you will be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen. For all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Detestable in the fact of unclean, uh, low in society, uneducated. Um, and as you get to see the society of Egyptians, they're clean and educated and pretty high up uh, in their way of keeping self. And so there is this place, there is this region of Goshen, one of the most fertile places in all of Egypt, that God has brought Israel to. Underneath that lordship of Pharaoh and second in command, Joseph. So as this narrative has unfolded, God's narrative is becoming more and more real, more and more true. That as God promised Abraham, as he spoke to Abraham early on in Genesis, if you remember that from months ago, I'm going to settle your people here in Canaan. But for 400 years, they're going to be out of this land But God will remember them. God will hear them. So here is that start. Jacob, Israel's family, now settled in Egypt for 400 years. To do what? He had to be under the oppression of the Egyptians. But more importantly, to become a great nation. Underneath the provision, underneath the nutrition, (laughs) underneath... Everything that God's going to provide for them in Egypt, he's also going to see that they're going to be oppressed, but also multiply in Egypt to become a great nation that God will bring up out of Egypt to be his own people. Yes, the story of God, the narrative of God, always unfolding to be close to his people, to provide for his people, and to protect his people. Same goes for you and me, the people of God. Always close, always sacrificing and providing for us, but always leading us forward with hope and a promise. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He'll hear us. And so we pray, we praise, we give thanks to a God who is near, providing, and protecting. Have a blessed day.